Hello everyone and welcome to Mars Reentry Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. Uh, this video was brought about by the fact that I've been launching Mars missions in my Beyond History series and I was curious whether, as we have a little bit of a wiggly problem on this particular Saturn V rocket, there we go, SAS fixed it, uh, curious whether the reentry profiles would work the same in 1.1.3 as they do in 1.2.2. And I have a strong suspicion that they won't. So I'm launching uh, three test articles. You can see them there. Uh, the first one at the top is a 5-ton capsule with a heat shield with no ablator. The second one is a 10-ton capsule with a 5-meter heat shield with 10% ablator. And the third one is a 15-ton capsule with a heat shield with 20% ablator. And so those are the ones that we're sending over. And here J2 is making the transfer. The transfer, the initial plot, uh, the ideal plot, if you will, uh, actually would have uh, sent us there in four months, but I thought that was a bit fast. So I used some extra fuel in order to make sure that we arrived in five and a half months, which is a bit more like a normal transfer, 163 days. And so that's why we're using more fuel than usual, but the goal is to arrive there with a velocity that's a little bit more normal. So it might be the case that if these tests work out in a certain way, I might have to add a little bit more ablator to our missions. But in any case, the main thing is to figure out what altitude I should set our periapses when we try and capture around Mars. And the thing is, I think that those numbers are different between different versions of the KSP. In 1.0.4, I used to aim around 50 kilometers. That seems to have changed in 1.2.2 based on recent experience because I was testing Mars missions in 1.2.2. Those were done during Twitch live streams and I had meant to make YouTube videos about those but uh, the missions in general could do with a little bit of polishing up so still working on that. Anyway here we are approaching Mars and we need to separate and I forgot about those shrouds. The shrouds decided to stick around a bit but uh, we, we will be quick loading in order to try different things out and they'll disappear. Uh, I think they're physicsless parts in this situation anyway. So they shouldn't have any impact on what goes on. And anyway, they'll disappear soon enough. Our first trip in is with the 15 ton vessel and with a 50 kilometer periapsis, 5 meter heat shield again. And that means that the area of the heat shield is pi times 2.5 squared because the it's a radius and 5 meters is the diameter. Uh, so when you work it all out, the loading on the heat shield here is 764 kilograms per meter squared. And that's how we have to think about this is take the mass of the vehicle and divide it by the area of the heat shield. And so this 764 kilograms per meter squared or about three quarters of a ton per meter squared. And 50 kilometers totally doesn't capture. I was interested in the velocity that we exit the atmosphere and that was 6,630 meters per second. And in order to capture, we need that below 4,750 meters per second surface velocity. The orbital velocity should be below 5,027 meters per second, which is escape velocity around Mars. So here we are with the 5-ton vessel, and this has no ablator at all. Now on the first test, uh, when you saw it pass through, it, lost, uh, it had charred ablator 0.76 only. But once we dump all ablator, uh, well, everything explodes. And this is a quirk of how the heat shields work. We're entering at about Earth orbital velocities, and Mars's atmosphere is 1 100th the density of Earth's, so we shouldn't be encountering that much heat. The problem is that without a blater, the heat shields act like they're made out of paper. And of course, the fuel tanks don't have that much heat tolerance, so that's basically the problem that we're facing here. Uh, you just need a tiny little bit of a blater and it'll keep it safe. But obviously that 5-ton tank without any ablator is not going to work. We're testing the 10-ton tank here again at 50 kilometers and trying to see what velocity it gets when it exits the atmosphere. And in the end, it does slow down much more than the 15-ton tank. It exits the atmosphere at 6,260 meters per second, which is about uh, 370 meters per second slower 
than the 15 ton tank at the same periapsis. They're all entering at the same speed by the way. Important to note that this approach to Mars as we see the 48 kilometer test with the 10 ton tank uh, which also did not make it. Uh, the approach to Mars at SOI entry when we enter Mars's SOI our velocity was 5910 meters per second and it was a 163 day transfer. So if when you're entering Mars SOI you're faster than that your numbers may vary and so this is all very touchy business. We are in every instance here entering the atmosphere at 7462 meters per second or about maybe 7461 but about there. So here we are coming in at 46 kilometers with the 48 kilometer periapsis with the 10 ton tank we hit uh, 5930 meters per second on exiting the atmosphere and here with 46 kilometers we get down to 5565 meters per second so roughly 370 meters per second slower and of course I'm plotting all these data points it's not linear it's actually sort of a curve and the deeper in the atmosphere you go the steeper the drop in velocity interestingly enough the velocity we lose going into the atmosphere through to periapsis is more than coming out even though we're shallower through the atmosphere going out on the way out of the atmosphere uh, out of the atmosphere yeah um, we actually lose less velocity there because of the way drag works so here we are 44 kilometers and I know that the periapsis is going down we're holding straight uh, surface retrograde in order to keep things as consistent as possible I'm only jotting down and only comparing based on the periapsis I set not the periapsis we eventually hit because atmospheric drag brings us down a little bit more. So here we have uh, 44 kilometers we still did not capture and of course I hope you all placed your bets initially. Uh, we exited the atmosphere at about 5115 meters per second so we were getting closer and here 42 kilometers was the set periapsis and at our, at our periapsis we hit 5950 and on exiting the atmosphere we ended up at 4600 meters per second which is captured and we captured at an apoapsis of 58654 kilometers with a period of two days one hour and 55 minutes and you can see the ablator usage which is trivial we carried 10 percent of our uh, of the total available ablator and we didn't really need 1% uh, and if I could just carry 1% I'd be happy uh, but yeah but this is why I thought that we could get away with no ablator whatsoever because uh, we don't really burn 1% of it and actually in 1.2.2 I don't think we need any but uh, I'll, I'll run another video with tests in 1.2.2 and see if it's really any different or whether I'm misremembering but anyway after the initial capture I tried 41 kilometers and so with this 10 ton load half a ton per meter squared of the heat shield that's how we need to think about this um, we captured to a 12,805 kilometer orbit uh, that's the apoapsis and a period of 8 hours and 10 minutes the velocity on exit was 4,243 meters per second still about 360 meters per second less than the previous interval which is an interesting tendency at 40 kilometers we ended up capturing into a 4,475 kilometer apoapsis with a period of 3 hours and 33 minutes. So basically my goal in this video is to just make note of all this, get all the data down and if you have different data maybe you can uh, share it as well and so that we have a sort of benchmark for how to do these things uh, in different situations. Of course these are all with the same approach into Mars and knowing how it works out with a different approach to Mars, say a different velocity when entering SOI would be interesting but so far with this 10 ton load we're losing between let's say 2 and 4 units of ablator, maybe up to 6. This was the final test with the 10 ton payload and this is at a 39 kilometer periapsis and at our periapsis we hit 5330 meters per second and on exit we'll hit around 3400 meters per second which is what I would qualify as a low orbit around Mars the apoapsis is 936 kilometers and really 
At this point, it'd be really touchy. You'd have to shade it by hundreds of meters on the periapsis in order to get any lower. The period is two hours there. So yeah, but we only lost two, well, our char ablator was 2.17 units. I think we lost probably around three to four. So yeah. Anyway, so now we're testing the 15 ton payload. That's a three quarter ton uh, per meter squared load. And we're testing it first at the altitude that we captured at, first captured at with the 10 ton payload, 42 kilometers. But we don't capture with that altitude here. So with the 15 ton payload, we do not capture at 42 kilometers. Instead, we exit at 5,497 meters per second. We use 7.5, or I should say, our charred ablator is 7.5 units. So uh, much more than with the 10 ton payload, uh, about uh, three to four times as much, but still uh, about 1%, less than 1% of the ablator that we could have carried on the seed shield. Uh, next pass was 39 kilometers, which was the lowest that we tested with the 10 ton payload. And here, we still did not capture, but just barely. Our exit velocity from the atmosphere was 4,800 meters per second, which is just above the capture velocity. So we know that anything below 39 kilometers would have worked. And the next test I wanted was 37 kilometers, and I was guessing that with 37 kilometers, we would uh, be matching about what the 10 ton payload did at 41 kilometers, so that there's a four kilometer difference so we're increasing the payload on this heat shield by 50% and uh, it turns out that we need to reduce our periapsis by 4 kilometers is what I'm looking at here. So here we end up exiting the atmosphere at 4,206 meters per second which is comparable to the 4,243 meters per second we saw at 41 kilometers with the 10 ton payload and this is our first capture. So the capture range for this 15 ton payload on a 5 meter heat shield starts at about 38 kilometers and uh, we can hypothesize that the lowest we should go is 35 kilometers if we still want to maintain an orbit. So that's our range here and with the 10 ton payload it was basically between 39 and 42 and with a possible 38 point something if we wanted to get a little bit lower. And again uh, in all cases the ablator was diminished by less than 1% of the heat shield capacity. These are lunar rated heat shields. Uh, it's possible we could even have used low earth orbit rated heat shields if that was you know less massive but it depends on the base mass of the part because we're dumping almost all of the ablator. So this pass at 35 kilometers brings us to a 780 kilometer apoapsis period of one hour and 56 minutes about the same as with 39 kilometers and the 10 ton payload. So anyway, these were the tests and based on this information I conclude that I need a tiny 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 bit of ablator on my heat shields and I need to edit those craft in the Beyond History series to add that tiny little bit and otherwise uh, I have some more data on what periapsis they should enter at but there's still no guarantees. Unlike these, they have little bits all over. They're not perfectly shaped capsules, the payloads. So there is uh, trouble with that. And uh, as far as actually adding the ablator, that wasn't a problem. Especially with the crude uh, capsule, it turns out that I had left ablator on a part that shouldn't have had any. And it was already carrying more ablator than it ought to have had. So I should remove that and put it to the bottom heat shield where it ought to be. So yeah, stuff like that will happen in the next episode of Beyond History. I hope uh, this information has been useful to you and I think I will do a video in 1.2.2 uh, trying out the same craft and we'll see what happens by comparison. And I'll try to make that shorter hopefully. Alright so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like and see you next time.